The peace of the Lord be with you, and good evening. This is our devotion for uh, Monday, March 11th, and uh, we'll be looking at the, the gospel lesson for this coming weekend, which is from Mark chapter 10, uh, verses 32 to 45, and as I do on Mondays, I'll be eating this out uh, in the early evening, so we'll uh, follow the early evening order, page 297 in the hymnal, and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look at Mark 10, 32 to 35. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 45. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what do, you want for, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to him and said to them, excuse me, called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, you were handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, condemned to death and uh, delivered to the Gentiles. You were mocked and you were spit on and you were flogged and you were killed. And all of this was how you came to serve us. Not that you would be served, but you, you would serve. We pray that as we are drawn to um, to the notoriety and to the um, to the honor that we would like to have, that we would recognize that the um, the honor truly is found in serving and loving others. That uh, that it's not in lording over others, but it's it's not in exercising authority over others, but it's um, but it's in serving. And that we pray that we would you would help us to to be slaves of all, and that we would we would serve uh, in in view of, of of how you have served us, and we give you thanks that you have served us by becoming a ransom for us, that you have redeemed us, that you have given your life, that we would have life and salvation in your death and in your resurrection, as you even now live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. All right, so. Um, so with this, we've got uh, the beginning of, of, of what we read, we've got the, the end of what we read, those two kind of go together, and then we've got this middle part with, with James and John asking for a place of honor. So, excuse me, so you see them, uh -oh. they're on the road, going up to Jerusalem, it says, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid, and taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was going to happen saying, see, we are going up to Jerusalem, and this, this going up, that, that um, in some sense is actually going up, right? You always go up to Jerusalem. Uh, you always go up to the temple because the temple's there. Um, but they are uh, apparently uh, near Jericho, and that's below sea level, so you're actually really really going up. Um, it, Jericho's below sea level, and, and Jerusalem's about 2,500 feet above sea, sea level. So, in any case, going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And so you might you might remember this uh, uh, 
pairing kind of with with, um, with the confession of of, of Jesus as um, as the Christ with with with, with Peter in particular. Um, you know, G, G, Peter makes that confession, and um, and then right after this is in, in chapter eight, and then right after that, um, Jesus says that. Um, well, Mark tells us, he says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So uh, so he says that, then Peter rebukes him. And and, P- and Jesus said to Peter, We're not, You don't have that on your mind, the things of God, but the things of man. Right? So so here Jesus is saying it again, a little bit more detail this time, spitting him, flogging him, make, mocking him, killing him, etc. Um so anyway, it's, it's, it's interesting that Mark pairs this then with right after this, James and John coming to Jesus. And it says, uh, so it says, uh, James and John, then the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What do you want me to do for you? Uh, the commentary I read made the point that, you know, Jesus has been saying things about, about asking, and, and, and then you'll receive, right? So you can, you can understand in those terms why, why James and John are... are um, why, why they're approaching Jesus in this way. It's kind of like, well, you, you said that you'd give it to us, so here we go. And, um, and, and, and they're, you know, it's interesting because the request, in some ways, has at its heart something that's, that's, that's honorable, right? To, to, to want to sit next to the Lord in his kingdom is a good thing. That's, that's not it. Um, but, of course, the problem is that, uh, that those are, places of very specific honor. You know, when you think of a king, the, the, the people sitting at the left and the right of the king would be, uh, would have would have special honor, right? And um, so they're really kind of saying that they want to be honored in that way. Well, that's that's thinking a little much of themselves, right? So so yeah, they're his disciples, and that's important, but do they do they actually get to do that? So, uh, what do you want me to do for you? Excuse me again. Oh. And they said to him, grant to us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. And Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. Uh, you know, you, you don't know, basically, you don't know how you get there. How do you get honor in God's kingdom? Well, we're, we're going to see this. But uh, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup I drink or be baptism with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said, yeah, we're able. Well, mm, okay. Uh, literally, are they drinking the cup that Jesus is drinking? They probably are. They probably have shared a, a cup with him, right? Um, uh, to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Well, they were baptized by John too, probably. So, yeah, I guess in the literal sense, okay, well, they're able. Uh, and Jesus says, uh, "The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism in which I am baptized, you will be baptized." Now, what this probably means. So, this is um, there's kind of an ambiguity here a little bit. So, what ends up being the cup and the baptism of Jesus? Well, we see in Paul that baptism is associated with death. You were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. Uh, so, so his death is his baptism. And uh, the cup, the cup is usually, or most often associated, especially in the Old Testament, associated with God's wrath, pouring out the cup of God's wrath, or drinking the cup of God's wrath. Um, and that's what Jesus does, right? He dies to drink the cup of God's wrath against sin. So, so can they do that? Well, no, but by virtue of the fact that they do, that they are baptized into Christ, you are therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ is raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too walk in newness of life. Or they're baptized in that baptism. So yeah, they, uh, they, they, have, that, they have that life. Um, and the cup that I drink, you will drink. And, and, and so, the, you know, they, they do drink the cup. The cup of Christ. Oh, excuse me. Uh, it's the, the time change week, right? Oof. So anyway, the, the, so they do drink that cup with him. Um, so so it's, the, it's, it's on the one hand what Christ actually suffers, they, they won't, but the, what, what they get from that union with Christ, um, they do by virtue of that have this cup in baptism. Now at the same time, um, James and John do suffer persecution as well. So that's, you know, it's very clear in the history of the church. So... So they have that where they, they do they do share in that as well. But nonetheless, but to sit at my right hand, verse forty, to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Jesus says, in essence, it's not up to me to grant this, right? So then going on, and when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. You can understand why. What why do they think that they get that great of a spot? And uh, and, and the point that Jesus ultimately is making that is that you want this spot, you want the honor 
without the suffering, right? Because what we see is that Christ shows us that the, there's the there's the cross before there's the glory, right? And they want the they want the glory without the cross, which is the same thing that Peter wanted. He didn't want Jesus to have the cross. He wanted him to have the glory. Um, and so, the, so Jesus makes this point here then. You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Um, and and that, that, there, that, that lording it, that in, in both of those, there's a, uh, a prefix on the, on, the, on the verbs there, on, on those words, that show that it's like something beyond, you know, it's something extreme. So it's not just, that, that's why I think there's the language of lording it over them and exercising authority over them. Um, you know, it's not just the proper administration of authority. It's 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 domineering. It's oppressive, right? And that's what the, that's what you see. Leaders oppress, right, because of the fallen world. And, uh, and and Jesus says, "But it shall not be so among you," because he shows us what authority truly does. Authority lays down its life for uh, for those under it. Um, you think of Ephesians 5. It tells right there tells wives to submit to their husbands, which we kind of. Uh, cringe at right, um, and then but then it says, "Husbands, lay down your lives for your wives, as Christ has done for the church." Right, and that's where we see what authority really does. It serves, it loves, it lays down its life. So it shall not be so among you. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. That's where greatness is to be found in the kingdom, is in loving and serving, giving up yourself, laying down your life for for others. Um, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. I think I mentioned this not too long ago, but Luther has a, a writing called the um, um, Freedom of a Christian. There we go. <laughs> the Freedom of a Christian. And he starts off on the Freedom of the Christian by saying that, uh, that the, the Christian is, is servant to none, master of all, and by virtue of, of his union with Christ, who is, who is Lord over all, right? So we are united to Christ, and we are servant to none, master of all. But the Christian... Is servant to all, master of none, voluntarily, right? Because we are under the lordship of Christ; He is our master, and so we serve. We serve those uh, others. Now we don't necessarily do this well, but that's what we're called to do, and that's why we come to the divine service week in and week out, right? We we need that forgiveness because we've fallen short of it, and we need that that uh, that that re-energizing toward toward seeking to do it in the week to come, right? Um, because this is what we see Christ, and that's why we call it the divine service, uh, because Christ comes and serves us there, as he says here, for even the Son of Man came not to, to serve, excuse me, came not to be served, but to serve. Now, this is specifically what he does here, and to give his life as a ransom for many, right? That's He serves, most importantly, by dying for us on the cross. Um, and as he is that ransom, then he, he suffers the atonement for our sins. He suffers the wrath of God for our sins. And he also ransoms us. If you think of like a ransom for a, a kidnapping, there's a freedom that comes with that. He also ransoms us for, um, for, 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 for to be free. We're freed from, from sin, death, and the devil. And then, so it's, our sin is forgiven. We're freed by that forgiveness, and now we live in the life of, of Christ. Um, you were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ is lived, Christ was raised by the glory of the Father, you too walk in newness of life, and that newness of life is that life of love, because Christ has first loved us. Amen. Uh, all right, so we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.